Hello everyone, I'm Sophie and I'm currently at Kachara Forest Retreat, Bentong, Malaysia. Today I'll continue sharing from the book by my guru, His Eminence, the 25th Sam Tuku Rinpoche. And this is the book that I'll be sharing from. Compassion Conquers All, Teachings on the Eight Verses of Mind Transformation, Sam Rinpoche. So this is a continuation and I'll be doing part two, Compassion, It is in Our Hands and starting from page 55. So before I go to that, I will share with you a picture of a Buddha. See a beautiful painting. Right, so page 55. The eight verses of mind transformation. Check ourselves out. How many years have we been doing Dharma? How many gurus have we chased? How many Rinpoches? How many div divinations? How many things have we done? We are, why are we not transforming? Because the very motive might be wrong. And along with that, we have wrong projection and a lack of merits. It is very clear, very concise and very logical. So, therefore, in the beginning, correct motivation is very important. In the middle, correct motivation is very important. And at the end, Correct motivation is very important. When motivation is correct, there will be wonderful, positive, lasting results. There is definitely an end. On that logical basis, I have just established with your intelligent and educated minds the fact that suffering can come to an end. Do you want it to come to an end? It is in your hands. We should have the motive to practice the Dharma, to go to the temple, see our gurus enthusiastically, with perseverance, with great patience, with great love and great understanding of the great value that will arise from there by being free from the eight worldly concerns, the eight wrong motives, which is a guideline for developing our motivation. And the wrong motivation is also impermanent. It is dependent on causes. The cause is ignorance. Once you have been given wisdom and knowledge, ignorance is cut. When ignorance is cut, the very foundation for wrong motive is cut. So what's left? Positive motive. Therefore, we should not have the motivation to do any action, especially Dharma action, to get praise, to avoid insult, to receive gifts, to be unhappy if we don't, to avoid bad reputation, to try to get good reputation, to try to receive comfort and try to avoid discomfort. It should be free of this. The motive should be enlightenment, freedom of suffering for everyone. I will get into developing the compassion step by step by step. We all want compassion. We like getting compassion. We like having compassion. We like being around compassion. So why don't we just be compassionate? Now we will talk about how to develop it. L Please let Geshe Langrik Tangpa's holy words sink in slowly. By realizing that all sentient beings are more precious than wish-granting jewels for attainment of the supreme goal, may I always hold them dear to my heart. Whenever I associate with anyone, may I view myself as least of all, and from the depths of my heart, may I cherish others as supreme. During all actions, as soon as thoughts or delusions arise in my mind that are harmful to myself and others, may I stop them with, with effective means. As for sentient beings who are bad-natured, when I see they are oppressed by negativity and pain, may I cherish them just like I am encountering a precious treasure that is difficult to find. May I accept unjust loss, such as others abusing me, or slandering me out of jealousy. May I offer the victory to others. And if someone I have helped, one for whom I have great hopes, harms me without slightest reason, may I view him as my holy guru. In brief, directly and indirectly, I offer aid and joy to all my mothers, 
may I secretly take upon myself all harm and sufferings of my mothers. May all of this be undefiled by the stains of the eight mundane views and true discernment, knowing all things as illusion, without grasping, may all be released from bondage. That is a very beautiful verse, the eight verses of mind transformation. And it, as I do hope that um, you revisit these verses and let it sink into your mind as Rinpoche had advised. Within these eight verses, if you practice well, it will be the path to enlightenment. So we go into verse 1. Be all beings are precious. By realizing that all sentient beings are more precious than wish granting jewels for attainment of the supreme goal, may I always hold them dear to my heart. It is said that if we wash a wish granting jewel three times, polish it three times, hang it on top of a huge banner and ask for anything. It can provide all of our basic food, water and necessities. Yet, sentient beings are far more precious because their existence enables us to achieve the state of great awakening. No such claim can be made of a wish granting jewel. The key point is that if there were no sentient beings, there would be no individual awakening. Without sentient beings, we cannot practice compassion. Without compassion, we cannot attain bodhicitta. Without bodhicitta, we cannot become one, become an enlightened being. Therefore, the kindness of sentient beings and the kindness of Buddhas are equal. Sentient beings are even more precious than a wish-granting jewel. All sentient beings, everyone around you, enemies, friends, neutral people, are very important to you because it is in, it, in dependence on them you achieve enlightenment. How is that? How do you practice patience if you have no enemies to develop patience with? And what Buddhas are there without patience? What Buddhas exist with no patience? We need to have patience. And the only way we can develop it is by someone helping us. And that someone is an enemy. So an enemy is just as precious as someone that benefits us because without them, how do we practice patience? One of the definitions of a Buddha is that he has patience. If we become a Buddha with no patience, if we hate enemies and we are a Buddha, I don't think we will end up on the altar. So think. We need to practice generosity. Who do we give things to? The trees? Waterfalls? Mountains? I offer this gold to you, mountain. No, it is two sentient beings. They are very kind to allow us to help them, that we are able to practice the parameter of dana, which is giving. If we want to go one step higher to our Dharma brothers and sisters, giving, helping, the Dharma institutions, the Sangha, and if possible, if we have one to our root guru, it is their kindness that allows us to practice the parameter of giving. Every Buddha has tremendous spiritual and unlimited inexhaustible inexhaust wealth. And where did it come from? Giving. Giving to sentient beings. So in order to develop wealth, in order to develop karma, to even be rich in your next life, you are dependent on others. So when you are dependent, when you are so dependent on others, how can we not respect them? They give us an opportunity to give, as well as to practice enthusiasm, perseverance, and so on. We want to become a Buddha, so we must love every single sentient beings that exist in the six realms. Let's say, there are 5 billion sentient beings in this world, and we love 4,999,000 sorry, 4,999,999,999. But we don't love one for any reason. Guess what? You cannot become a Buddha. How can a Buddha love everyone except her, except him? I love everyone. I love every single sentient beings except that one. Think about it. 
Your actual enlightenment is dependent on every single sentient being and your attitude and motive towards them. So they are very kind to exist to let you develop this. If we show a bad face, a sour face, if we engage in bad talk, gossip, negativity, if we shout and scream and hurt and abuse others, we don't realize how precious they are. They are just as precious as the Buddhas. They are equally precious according to the Bodhicaya, sorry, Bodhicaya Vatara by Shantideva. If they are equally important, do you think you can pray, kowtow, make offerings to the Buddha and the, and the three jewels, your guru and the sangha, and turn around and abuse other sentient beings and become enlightened? You are in some weird cult because that is not what Buddha taught. You have all been we have all been guilty including myself of following this weird cult in front of the buddha we kowtow we prostrate we have tears then we turn around someone bothers us and we complain hey we have done that over and over and over the buddhas are important because we need their teachings we need their blessings we need their inspiration we need their guidance we need the three jewels we need them 50 percent and in order to fill what they have taught us where is the object to act out what they have taught us? Sentient beings. That's right, all sentient beings. Neutral ones, hated ones and loved ones. And the very fact that you have hated ones and, the, and neutral ones in your vocabulary shows that you are not practicing Dharma. Think, it is all so interconnected and so logical. So how can we just prostrate to the Buddhas Prostrate to the Sangha, prostrate to our Guru, to our altars, not show equal reverence, respect to everyone else. And of course, you don't have to run around with lotus candles and light on for everyone you, met, you meet and say, I respect you and pray to you. Of course, you don't have to be that fanatical. The point here is to have a sincere respect for other sentient beings. That includes your wife who gets on your nerves, who nags. That includes your husband who gets on your nerves, who comes home from work at 11 o'clock. That includes your kids who shout and scream non-stop. That includes loving the guru who shouts at you. You've got to love everyone, everything. You sh we should start with our gurus. We should start with our wives and we should start with our husbands. Have we been mistreated? So, have we been, been mistreating our wives? Have we been talking angrily to our maids? Have we been mistreating our husbands and talking wrongly to our husbands, to our friends, to our relatives? Have we, if we have, I don't think we are making progress here. And if we are not making progress, we are not going to suffer. Uh, sorry, we are going to suffer. Of course, there are certain people who really get on our nerves. We don't have to beg hug or kiss them and say, I love you, and hold their hands for 24 hours and say, look, Guru, I'm practicing compassion. You don't have to do that. The point is, let them be the way they are, but don't hate them. You may avoid them for now for the re with the reason that you have not yet fully developed compassion. Until you have developed compassion, you don't want to have any hate, or you want to protect yourself for now. But that cannot go forever, go on forever. I hate them. I want to protect myself, so I stay away. So, we have, to, we have got to love all sentient beings to become enlightened. If we don't, how do we become enlightened? Impossible. So, to become enlightened, 50% is dependent on sentient beings. We should start today, now, this moment, to start loving our wives, start loving our husbands, start loving our children, our relatives, our parents, our aunts and uncles, our Sangha members, our gurus, people who are neutral to us, people who we just met, and especially enemies. We should start. Stop kowtowing to the Buddhas because it is just 50% of the game. If you count out to them, it means you will follow what they are saying. You respect what they are, what they represent, what they teach you, and therefore you count out. So if you count out and you turn around to do the opposite, you should get an Oscar award for your brilliant acting. And we all should get an Oscar because we are the greatest actors on earth. 
all of us. Think about it. It sounds funny, but it is true. That's why it's funny. We have to respect everyone. We have to respect everything. And we must re start with the people who are easiest for us to respect. From our gurus to the Sangha, to our Dharma brothers and sisters, to other religious practitioners, to neutral people, to enemies. Without the deep respect, 50% of your practice is not there. A table cannot stand without two legs. Sorry, a table cannot stand with two legs. Think about it. We need to start practicing this. Please, practice the first verse. That verse has such deep meaning. Let's become real Dharma practitioners. We have received the first verse. Let's put it into action. Let's make it stable. And let's make it constant. And let, let's support it and make it constant and stable by offering to the three jewels. Prostrations, meditations on meditational deities, mantras and so on. I implore you, my old friends and my new friends, to please put this teaching into practice, this moment. Meditation. What will it be like to perceive every living being as infinite precious, infinitely precious? How would my body feel? How would my emotions feel? How would my heart and mind feel? How would I interact with them? Allow yourself to breathe in these liberating energies and relax within them. Let them become one with you. And let me go back and repeat the first verse so that it may get a deeper impression. By realizing that all sentient beings are more precious than wish-granting jewels for attainment of the supreme goal, may I always hold them dear to my heart. And with that, I will end the session today, or for now, and the next I will go on to, into verse 2. So before I end today's um, sharing, I would like to share with you some activities that will be taking place in Kachara Forest Retreat. And this is one of them. Ulam Bana, which, is, which will be held on the 10th of August, 2019. Uh, it's a Saturday. Um, the event will be from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. at Kachara Forest Retreat. At 9 a.m., we will have the opening speech and Dharma sharing. At 9.30 a.m., Grand Ulambana Genze Puja, which will bring good fortune, long life and merits. At 12.15 p.m., free vegetarian lunch. At 2 p.m., the Grand Ulambana Trakze Puja, which is for protection and blessings. At 5 p.m., the event ends. There are several packages which, um, if possible, um, you sh uh, I would say that you know do sponsor because then you have the merits to dedicate to in remembrance of your dearly departed, and also to maybe as a, a symbolic gratefulness for those in, around you. So this um, the package starts from twenty dollars and it goes up to the grand sponsor, which is at six thousand eight hundred and eighty eight. And with that merits, you are able to dedicate as um, you are able to write um, your dedication, whom you like to dedicate to, or what um, events or what your wish may be. Um, so it would be good that um, to do some dedication, so you can actually whatever is comfortable, um, you just uh, pick the package that you would like to do. And the event, as mentioned, will be at Kachara Forest Retreat, Jalan Changmang, Bentong, Pahang, Malaysia. And if you do have inquiries, you can contact these two numbers at 609-221-5600 or 603-7803-3908. Or you can WhatsApp the message to 6012-987-3908. And you can email your any inquiries to care at kachara.com. There's a website, vrajasecrets.com, where all the um, sponsorship packages are. And also you're able to find out more details on the event. And wherever you may be, whether you're local, you're overseas, or you're in other states, you are able to do the sponsorship online. 
So it saves you a lot of trouble having to come here to actually um, pay for it. So even um, even being overseas is such a conven convenient convenience, you know, to actually go online to do all this dedication, and the the pujas will still be carried out and the merits will be dedicated to according to your wishes. So that is one of the events that is upcoming on Saturday, and I do hope that you will make time to join us. There's the next event which is for students, whether it's school children or adults going for classes or you know going for enrichment programs. So this is um, the exam puja, but it I end blessing ceremony. So it's not necessary just exam. It's actually to increase our wisdom and our our um, um how do you say improve our knowledge. So the event will be on 11th August on a Sunday, which is right after the Ulambana um, prayers on Saturday. So this is 11th August, Sunday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Kachara Forest Retreat, Bentong. So this um, puja will be able to give your child the extra advantage in the upcoming exams, remove temporary obstacles to learning, improve memorizing ability, absorb and retain knowledge well, clearer mind and better focus, beneficial for all students who are preparing for exams at any level. Ensure all your, all your child's hard work pays off in success. And as I mentioned, it's also applicable to adults who are also going for classes and wish to learn. So, join the Kachara Puja team and the monks of Gandhi Monastery to be blessed by Manjushri, the Buddha of Wisdom. And yes, we do have, currently we do have four monks from Gandhi Monastery and they will be also joining in the Pujas, which um, you sh if you have not um, joined us before, do try to make it, then you'll be experiencing an authentic Tibetan Buddhist Puja. So this uh, will take place on 11th August on Sunday, Kachara Forest Retreat, Bentong. And on the 25th of August, Sunday too, it will be at Kachara House in Putaling Jaya. So if you wish to know more, visit our site at bit.ly slash 2 capital M L J N capital T capital U. So... Do join us if you wish to increase your wisdom. And with that, thank you for sharing your time with me. And I would like to end this in a completion dedication in Tibetan. Jangjo sen jorin po shi ma ge pa nam ge yi shi ge pa nam pa me pa yang go ni go nu pe wa shu do ni to wa rin po shi ma ge pa nam ge yi shi ge pa nam pa me pa yang go ni go nu pe wa shu da so ji ni sam pa ge wa di da na zhu wa go na ga pa da je pa je su lo san cha pa yi tan ping yi po rin du sa se shu ge wa kun do yin da la ma da ro mi cho ki pa la lo cho ji sa dam la ngi ya te ra so ni do ji cha ngi ngo pa ngo tu su ge wa di yu du da la ma san ge ju yu ni ju wa chi ke ma lu pa de yi sa la go pa shu Jogigapusungapa, Yes, and Lama Kusin Rapping Ching, Nanga Trini Chocho Kapan, Lossam Tempin Dromi Sapsungi, Joy, Musa Tatuni, Gushi, Gamwe Rawi Koishin, come then, Bend and Dewa Maluguin, Children say when Tensin get so ye, Shapeshi de Badu, then Gushi, Hom Tomping Otro Malupa, then the Dalla Sell do so, God and Dempa Long Chatnam, Gapa Sushik Shukden Sell. Thank you for sharing your time with me again, and please do share your time with me for the next session, which will be a continuation on verse 2. See you.